Hold on. Yeah. Um, so I was thinking we could start with our fun activity we did last week of saying one thing you're grateful for and passing around the ball to yes. do that. <laughs> so we'll start with Evan. I am thankful for contact lenses so I can see all the leaves. Nice. <laughs> I am thankful for silence. Amen. I'm thankful for my boys. Get to spend time with you and your stuff is not my thing. <laughs> I'm not very good at this. Uh, I am thankful for this beautiful fall. Sometimes, I mean, I found out my, this week, first time I was on You Are My Sunshine for somebody, and she's joining me, and it's like, okay, and I don't sing well, <laughs> so, but awesome. I'm thankful for that. Oh, that's awesome. That's funny. I was going to say sunshine. I, I, <laughs> feel, <laughs> I, feel, I feel like the more it's disappearing, the more I'm, like, aware, and I'm like, when the sun came out this afternoon, I was like, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. I know. <laughs> Rainbow last night. Rainbow. I'm driving down these belts. I'm going, Rainbow! Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. Do you want to do one more round? Yeah, let's sure. Do it. We can, I can do one real quick and then. Okay. Or you can go. <laughs> <laughs> I can go and drop the ball. Um, I am thankful that I got to go on a field trip with my youngest today. <laughs> today I was happy to have a coat. Oh, nice. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thankful I dropped the ball. <laughs> 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 that was it, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God it all finished. I'm grateful for this church. It's all the love that you've been giving me. Oh. Hey, Kayla. <laughs> thankful for candy. That's awesome. That's wonderful. Um, da 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 da. I'm hey. thankful for singing. Rachel? I'm thankful for God's love. Ooh, <laughs> yes. We're saying what we're thankful for. I'm <laughs> thankful for my children being adults and walking in their adulthood. Wow. Mm. Yeah. 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 That depends so much yeah. on them. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm thankful for, like, sunsets. Say, who's left? Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, man. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Uh, yeah, thankful for the joy of the Lord and um, being secure in God. Awesome. I am thankful um, for my car. Um, so I'd love to say, if there's anyone from last week, that there's anything that stood out to you from this last time or like that you've been thinking about i can share one thing i've noticed um evan last week talked about thanksgiving and praise we for those of you who just joined us too but um psalm 100 talks about how we enter his courts with thanksgiving or his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise and um and then tonight we're going to talk more about worship and it's kind of this progression of thanksgiving and praise to worship and to adoration and like more of the depth of god um, so anything, any highlights from last week? I have a friend that's sharing uh, with my coworker. I was just sharing about thankfulness, and I gave an illustration. One of my good friends that's a um, great 
two years she wanted the house and she kept saying, I want the house, Lord, I want the house, and she finally became thankful. Mm. Like, Lord, thank you that the home that I have is what, mm. where you want me, blah, blah, blah. And so I'm sharing that with this coworker, and she looks at me and she goes, that was from God. Because Aww. I forgot. She was in the process. Every time she comes near oh. buying a house, something happens, and it, she's a single mom, and there goes her money. And it was Aww. like, so she took yeah. away from just me sharing that which I learned. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I liked how Evan made us a meal, taught us how to cook. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was both. It was truly um, good, pretty good. And uh, I, I think the thing that hit me a lot was the... No. <laughs> the, the premise that like worship is a heart posture and has really nothing to do with music or instruments or praise mm. but those can all be pieces but it's like in how you choose to lift yeah, yeah. that's awesome I noticed that I was um I would catch myself complaining a little bit more often this week. <laughs> like, <laughs> or maybe not more often. I catch myself yeah. more often is what I'm saying. Thank you, Jesus. So uh, yes. Well, I was <laughs> driving on the Beltline. I think I was like talking to my mom, and I was like, oh, I hate when people drive like this on the Beltline. And I'm so grateful that I can be driving right now. <laughs> I like shift that perspective. <laughs> That's called moving in the opposite spirit. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but yeah, actually, this what I was about to talk about was um, defining worship. So first, and then going into posturing our hearts, actually, was what I was going to reference. But um, the first time worship is mentioned is Genesis 22, 5. So we could turn there quick, uh, if you have a Bible. And I found this so interesting. It was when Abraham was about to sacrifice Isaac. Um, so we could go, do the whole context if we want to start with, uh, if somebody wants to read one through five, not five, where was it? Okay, let's do... Um, okay. Now I lost. The verse that it, oh yeah no it is five uh, if somebody wants to read Genesis twenty two one through five sometime later God tested Abraham's faith Abraham God called yes he replied here I am take your son your only son yes Isaac whom you love so much and go to the land of Mor Moriah go and sacrifice sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains which I will show you. The next morning, Abraham got up early. He saddled his donkey and took two of his servants with him, along with his son, Isaac. Then he chopped wood for a fire for a burnt offering and set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day of their journey, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. Stay here with the donkey, Abraham told his servants. The boy and I will travel a little farther. We will worship there, and then we will come right back. Awesome. And I... What I found interesting, this is like the first place, so he, he already was posturing his heart. He knew this was his promised son, and his whole promise was the, um, it was like multitudes of people, multitudes of descendants from him, and yet he was called to sacrifice this one son, and his initial response was to worship, that he trusted God, he knew God as provider, so he trusted him in that way, and he worshipped before he did anything else and as you see later in the story then God came through as provider um, but really that's what I wanted to get at was that heart posture you know we just talked about that too it's like posturing our hearts to um, in a way that sees God for who he is um, and the that word for worship is shaha it's S A C H A H. Um, it's pronounced Shaha or something similar to that. Uh, and it means to bow down. So it's like falling down on our knees before the Lord. But it's a posture of the heart of bowing down before Him. Um, and then it's really worship is declaring His worth. He's the most important one on all the earth. He's worth it all, every breath, every part of us. 
Um, so it's posture or hurts in that way. Um, so I wanted to talk about that with posturing or hearts. Like it can come from, it often does begin with Thanksgiving and praise. You kind of see this progression. Evan referenced that last week too, of like Sunday mornings. We often start with that, like more of the upbeat praise songs and then like kind of work our way into the holy of holies, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, and other times it just like, you can just enter right in. Like you don't have mm-hmm. to start there. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't remember how you worded it to me, Evan, but when we were prepping for this a while back, you were talking about that, like just living in that place of Thanksgiving and like we can live in his courts with in that place of Thanksgiving and praise. It's like posturing our hearts in such a way um, that when we do just see him as he is, we can fall on our faces and worship. It's like that yeah. quick response, so to speak. Um, so... Posturing ourselves, posturing our hearts is reminding ourselves, centering our hearts back on him, renewing our minds, being aware of him and honoring him in that. And really it just becomes easier with practice. Um, I was thinking about a lot of, how many of you are in the formation groups right now? Oh, awesome. A lot of you. Just one that I get. (laughs) (laughs) I just listened through this week's. um, But really, like, it's all about... We've been talking about that with the practicing the way. It's all about like um, just doing these things, setting up these practices, these rhythms in our life that we can um, just remind ourselves of who God is and kind of like set our eyes on him. And so um, one way to do this is just the beginning and the end of the day, turning our hearts towards him, finding times throughout the day, like at mealtime, at just like a 10 second reminder of like god you are good i worship you you are worthy like just setting our eyes on him uh sometimes it can come in the um like starting with thanksgiving and moving into moving into that i was thinking about a couple weeks ago i had a my car was getting fixed i had a loaner car and i i think maybe matthew shared about this but i was back out of my driveway i scraped the loaner car and already the my fix was going to be like way more than I thought. And that night I just felt like so heavy and it was like nothing could break that heaviness, you know. Uh, but my youngest or my third daughter, she just started singing this song like I don't know if she was making it up, but it was like um, just this little praise song. Um, I can't think of what it was, but. I was hearing her sing this just randomly and I'm like, oh yeah, like it was just that reminder. And, and so then in that moment, I, gratitude is the song that came to mind. And so I just started singing that out and it like, it really shifted my heart, my, the feelings that I had even towards this. I'm like, oh yeah, you are good. And, um, worship is that shift from talking about what he's done. Like how we said, how praise is like, um, Thanksgiving and praise. It's like magnifying what he's done for us, like thanking him for what he did. But now we're saying, thank you, God, for your provision. I see you as provider. And worship's moving into more of that place of like, you are a provider. Like you are constant. You are good. You are, it's like lifting up who he is. Um, and so one of the ways to do that is to set aside those specific or maybe not even set aside, but like have those specific moments where we just remind ourselves. Um, and throughout the day, it can just be like a quick, like maybe it is when you, for me, like this past week with the complaining, it's like the moment that I complained, I was reminded, oh yeah, like, no, like I have so much to be grateful for and kind of shifted that perspective. So whatever, if there's something that you can attach to it of like, um, I'm going to worship you, God, in this moment. Um, You know, like something that will remind you each time um, is a great way to do it. And then we have like in our set-aside time with him, we were talking a lot about last week too that it's, I think somebody mentioned it tonight too, but it doesn't require music. It's, you can use music. I think there's a power in singing and in song and sometimes it can help set our hearts in a way that, when nothing's going on, it can't, you know, (laughs) but, um, but there's a power in just declaring who he is and speaking that out. Um, so I wanted to take a moment if everyone wants to discuss, maybe we just split up by table. If you want to talk about ways 
that you worship in your quiet time? Like maybe it looks like um, reading through a psalm or meditating on scripture, or maybe it is actually worship music or whatever it is. If there's specific things that you do in your quiet time that you want to share together and um, talk through that for a couple of minutes. So I'm like, I put it on and I was just worshiping and sometimes it's like, there's like a blocker there and that's what she was saying. It's like, I put on worship music and I'm like, no, I'm going to move past this. Like, okay, what is this? And um, I think when I'm like at that low of low, sometimes it's like I push it on, I put it on and I just worship. And it's like, okay, I'm going to like do my best that I can. And sometimes it just like explodes and bubbles out of me and I'm like, okay, good. For me, it is it, playing at the piano, singing, like, I don't know, it's multiple things. I actually, when I set aside time, though, with the Lord, a lot of times I'm just sitting on the couch, and I'll, I go through scripture sometimes, like, um, and just start worshiping, or, like, just, oftentimes it's without music, actually. <laughs> it's more like, if I'm going to go, like, set, I know, sit down at the piano, feels like a bigger thing you know what I mean? or not a bigger ah, thing but like right. more like okay now I'm gonna like give like 30 minutes or so but if I'm like having like 10 minutes or something like that then it's like I'm gonna sit and just open up scripture and just start speaking it out I guess so yeah 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 I kind of wondered because like you're in worship yes or singing like on the way here actually I was like I mean it can be singing but usually like without other music though too it's like, yeah, familiar, on the way here, I didn't have any music playing. I was like, okay. I was listening to the end of the practice in the way, the, this week's um, 
teaching and then like but then just started like singing you are worthy mm-hmm. like yeah and it just kind of felt that shift in my own heart doing that so yeah thank you Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you want to play piano on Sunday? <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> Good, there's an opening. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, I'm joking. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. we can keep, let's keep going. We'll have a few more discussion times, too. Um... So then, um, I can't remember why I separated this out. So, posturing our hearts, um, it, to posture our hearts, it can be that like quick, like thinking of the Lord, setting our eyes, setting our hearts on Him. It can be that like set aside time, like we just talked about, like when you have a little more time and you're really like pouring out before Him. Um, it can be in corporate worship that we're doing that. And I think something that's really powerful in corporate worship is physically posturing ourselves or really when you're by yourself too, um, in both ways. But there's something about our bodies moving in the way that we're, um, what's the word? Like that we are experiencing in our hearts towards the Lord. Um, so whether that's like bowing down before him or lifting your hands in worship or standing, sometimes it is actually standing, um, in his presence. But there's a power in that, uh, or dancing before him. And I know that takes another level of like letting go. And I think that's the powerful thing of that word, shaha. Um, that's a portion of it is that surrender, like that, or the meaning behind that word for worship is that surrender also. I mean, you could really see that in Abraham's life of it was like recognizing who God is and it's like surrendering fully to him. Um, so let's, let's take a little time. We did this kind of thing last week too, but if we go, if everybody just on their own, take Psalm 96 and read through it and just let worship rise up in you. I, something I, um, actually heard this from Misty Edwards when she was sharing about how to flow prophetically, like, and she was talking more musically, but she talked about like she'll take psalms or whatever scripture and she'll sing it out word for word first and then she sings it out um in her own words and then the third time it's like she's singing from god's heart of like what are you saying about this scripture um so we'll take like 10 minutes everybody on your own and um if you want to sing you're welcome to sing it but you could just speak it out um and don't be afraid to do that out loud like uh, wherever you go, um, no one else is, will probably be listening to you. They'll be worried for you know, thinking about what they're doing with the Lord. So if you want to just take the scripture, Psalm 96, and read through it, and as you do, just let worship rise up in your heart. So honestly, if you don't even get through the whole thing, that's no problem at all. Like, uh, Don't feel bound by what it needs to be. Like, Just let worship start to flow of like, as you start reading through it, maybe there's words that are coming to your heart or your mind of like, um, you know, it's like declare his glory among the nations. God, you are so good. Like, I, I love that you are over the nations. Like you see every nation, you know, it's like, just start pouring that out, uh, before him. So if we would take 10 minutes and then feel free to go throughout wherever there's the family room, there's the lobby. If you want to stay in here, you're welcome to do that. Can I add one thing? Yes. I often find it really helpful. I change him to you. I talk to God yes. about it. I read it back to him. So you might find that helpful as well. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah, that's awesome. So we'll just do 10 minutes. So um, it's 6.57 right now. So 7.07.
Everybody's more in like this somber player. <laughs> like, um, yes. If everyone could share for a moment um, at your tables again, just ways that God has revealed Himself to you. Um, with what we were just talking about, is how worship shifts from that thanksgiving and praise of like more that that focus is more on what He's done, and now we're focusing on who He is. Um, so whether it was through the psalm, maybe, I mean, you're welcome to share anything that came out during that. Otherwise, just in general, like how God has been revealing himself to you. And it, it often it is by his actions that we see that, but it kind of takes us to that new place of like, wow, he really is provider. Like after you start to experience that more and more. Um, so if you guys could take a few minutes to share that with your tables. <laughs> or if you want to do it, does everybody, would you rather all together or in your group? Yeah. All together. All right, let's do that. Okay, cool. Just ways that he's revealing himself to you, whether in this psalm or just in general in life right now. For me, something that came out in this song was like just how present he is, like how he always shows up. I can't remember why or where it came from, but just felt like he's always so present and faithful to come through, like faithful to show up. Some of the parts that always stuck out to me were like, and this is passion translation, that breathtaking brilliance and awe and radiate from your shining presence the stunning beauty overwhelms all and then like talks a little later on about like let everyone wait in wonder as they tremble in awe before him and um, mm -hmm. I think like as a human I feel overwhelmed by a lot of things all the time and like this is a really good kind of overwhelm mm -hmm. I don't know, a big lesson in life I've been learning is uh, ab about, I don't know, court system and all sorts of mess that's here on earth. And mm -hmm. I've had to learn the parallel of like, will not the righteous and just judge of the whole world do right by his children? And mm -hmm. in the end of this, it hit me because I had never seen this before, but for here he comes, the Lord God, he is ready to judge the, the world. He will do what is right and can be trusted to always be what is fair. Mm -hmm. And it's to me, it was just, it was, it was just echoing that same like, will not the righteous and the just judge of the whole world do right by his children? Yeah. Like, um, I love that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, going off that just this weekend, he was um, showing me how he's the god of war. Mm. To execute righteousness and justice on the earth, and reading Revelations and riding the white horse, where the things of art and the big vultures are circling to feast on them. It's like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Matt, just 
the weight the weight of the the realness of that. Mm. I've been um, meditating and with a couple friends like writing a song um, a song about Psalm forty six, which is like the be still and know that I am God one, mm. but. You know, in the beginning, there's like all the chaos of the world, and you know, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, but the Lord lifts his voice, and the earth melts. And like when he speaks, there's peace. Mm -hmm. And um, I liked that in this one, um, you know, the earth is like rejoicing because in that Psalm 46, there's like more destruction and chaos of the earth. But I like that this one is. Psalm 46, you know, it's like, let all the trees of the forest sing for joy, and let the sea resound in that joy. And so it was, um, I just liked, I don't know, thinking through that, too, like, the, the earth is going to continue to be healed, and, like, the Lord is going to heal the earth in that chaos. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been, the song that's been replaying all week for me is um, Sing a New um, my Soul Sings by um, mm -hmm. Jonathan MacArthur, and I think Phyllis, um, I forgot her last name, but she's a part of the Jesus Church, but she was singing it in um, the version I was singing, so I liked that it connected, so it's been a new song for him, mm -hmm. and, that, and then like that thinking about my soul singing, and what does that look like, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that is good. Yeah. like the song is in me and it's like song from my childhood mm. that they sung at church mm -hmm. and um just recently i was um i want to say maybe about three nights ago uh the song is by um i think elevation come to the altar mm -hmm. the father's arms are wide uh -huh. and it just kept i don't even remember all the words to it but i, I got up and put it on youtube it just it was just like it, he was washing over me with that yeah. song yeah yeah that's awesome mm -hmm. yeah I love uh, verse 4 uh, he is great and greatly to be praised and then mm -hmm. also 11 and 12 um, where uh, it says let the field be joyful and all that is in it uh, then all the trees of the woods uh, will rejoice before the Lord. <laughs> I feel like sometimes in nature it feels like um, almost like everything around kind of comes alive with the wind that was just like blowing through and it just kind of brings the joy of the Lord. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Anyone else? Yesterday, we, uh, at, I read, I read in the uh, Passion Translation and in the com um, Complete Jewish Bible, and interesting about be, about being fair, and that reminded me of this verse in Psalm one nineteen verse sixty eight. You are good, and what mm -hmm. you do. Uh -huh. Oh, I'm on a bad day now. I need the five percent. You know, no, he's like that is him. He's good, and yeah. I've uh, since we've been coming to church, uh, probably for the last six, seven weeks. Uh, I'll come. I'll have a headache. and I we come and worship and the presence of God just comes all over me mm. and I just get wave after wave after wave every week and what has happened physically to me is that when I get in God's presence 
presence like that, all of a sudden, uh, my head, my neck, you know, all that stuff that that's producing pain, it's like all the muscles relax and all the tension goes out and it's not behind my eyes. And um, so, you know, just being being in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And then a uh, third thing, uh, it reminded me of Elisha, and uh, he said, bring the minstrel, and I let him play. And, and then, because of the worship, then that, that was, uh, that opened the heavens for what God wanted to say to his king. The, just the import of, oh yeah, yeah, this worship and uh, <laughs> and he's really who he says he is, and mm -hmm. he really does do stuff, and I'm j I'm just so yeah, just so thankful. Mm -hmm. for his grace. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, let's turn to Revelation four. And this is really um, a picture of the worship of heaven. And um, in this, we referenced this book before, this Ruth Ward Heflin book called Glory. Uh, it's really, really good. But she talks about that. Like when you come into that place of worship, there's two things that happen. Like first, we often are drawn to his feet. Like we fall down at his feet in that like his majesty, the fear of the Lord. And then we're drawn into intimacy, though, like, and it's kind of interesting, like, we've referenced all those things, as, like, as a group. Um, then you were sharing about, like, the Father's embrace, and it's like that, um, the intimacy of the Lord. So I want to kind of go through those two things. So Revelation 4 um, is that first part. So um, I think this one I'll read through. Feel free to follow along, or if you want to close your eyes and, like, just allow God to draw you in in to worship and focusing, you know, just bowing before him, really. Um, After this I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven, and the first voice which I had heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne stood in heaven with one seated on the throne, and he who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and Carnelian, and around the throne was a rainbow that had the appearance of an emerald. Around the throne were 24 thrones, and seated on the thrones were 24 elders, clothed in white garments with golden crowns on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder, and before the throne were burning seven torches of fire, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was, as it were, a sea of glass like crystal. And around the throne, on each side of the throne, are four living creatures, full of eyes in front and behind. The first living creature like a lion, the second living creature like an ox, the third living creature with the face of a man, and the fourth living creature like an eagle in flight. And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and within. And day and night they never cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who is seated on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Worthy are you, O Lord, our God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. Is there anything that stood out in that to anyone? Just trying to process what those creatures look like. I know, yeah. <laughs> Like you had heard God's voice before, and then when 
with the most tools to what that mm -hmm. that time in worship. You know, like on a different level of worship. As the door was standing open, he didn't see it closed and then it opened. Mm -hmm. It was already open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I need your sight. I think it's for something. Come up here. <laughs> I think the Lord's saying to you, come up here. I got to show you something. When I heard the holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, I was like, this is going to be fun. Uh. Like that was what I had me. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like all this weird creatures running yeah. around with six yes. wings. Uh, yes. <laughs> That's the first time I realize, or it says that the eagle is in flight, like an eagle in flight. But it has wings just like so, every other creature. Yeah, so it's not even like it's, I always pictured them standing. Mm. <laughs> it's, yeah. like it's, in, it's like in flight right now. <laughs> so I have a question. What is the significance? The rainbow is like emerald color. Uh huh. And I'm like, this is very interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I almost wonder if it's like something that's kind of transparent or like yeah. you can see uh -huh. the colors. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, um, yeah. I don't know, because God created all the dimensions too. So I wonder. Oh, that's interesting. But I was. I was thinking of there's commentary. Okay. Oh. It says this is not a typical rainbow. For a uh -huh. rainbow has seven colors. This is more of a halo of light yeah. shining all around the throne. It's a full circle, not a half circle. Oh. Um, it yeah. could have been horizontally or vertically around the throne. Mm -hmm. it, it goes on for a whole bunch, but <laughs> emerald rainbow points to God's mercy and covenant love. For he gave the sign of a rainbow to Noah signifying that he would never again destroy the world through a flood. The rainbow around the throne would be a clear symbol that everything God does, coming from his throne of majesty, is surrounded by grace and mercy. Mm -hmm. The emerald, the Hebrew word emerald is tuar, which is translated flashing of light. Mm -hmm. There's more fun in there. That was good. That was good. <laughs> yeah, the flashes of lightning and the rumble of thunder stood out to me too. Is the intensity of this scene? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not like this. Mm -hmm. It's intense. <laughs> it's not like we just experienced. Uh, yeah. Quiet, like, okay, cool. Yeah. Right. No, it's really intense. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then the day after day and night after night, I think about uh, sometimes when we sing "Worthy of It All." Uh -huh. We sing that part of like. Uh, almost calm and kind of that like ah oh, feeling but it's like so intense in this moment yeah yeah so intense yeah god is intense like camping <laughs> like camping <laughs> no like like david in the tabernacle like on the mountain it was so intense that the people said okay okay we don't want to hear your God saying to right. you. Yeah. You just tell us. You tell right. us what God is saying to you. So, um, so as we just processed through that, like looked at that, there's also the aspect of intimacy. So I want to turn to Psalm 42. Um, would someone want to read through this psalm? I can again if it's helpful to just listen sometimes. I can read it. Psalm 42. Okay, yeah, that sounds great. As the deer longs for the strong, I'm reading from a different uh, NLT. NLT. That's good. As the deer longs for streams of water, so I long for you, O God. I thirst for God, the living God. When can I go and stand before him? Day and night, I have only two. 
tears for food, while my enemies continually taunt me, saying, where is this God of yours? Mm -hmm. My heart is breaking as I remember how I used to be. I walked among the crowds of worshipers, leading a great procession to the house of God, singing for joy and giving thanks amid the sound of a great celebration. Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. Now I am deeply discouraged, but I will remember you, even from distant Mount Hermon, the source of the Jordan, from the land of Mount Mizar. I hear the, the tumult of raging seas as your waves and surging tides sweep over me. But each day, the Lord pours his unfailing love upon me. And through each night, I sing his song, praying to God, who gives me life. O oh God, my rock, I cry. Who have you forgotten me? Why have you forgotten me? Why must I wander around in grief, oppressed by my enemies? Their taunts break my bones. They scoff. Where is this God of yours? Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. Thank you for reading that. I purposely picked this one. Um, I know it kind of goes back and forth of the intimacy and then his depression, really. But I feel like that's a really key point of intimacy. It's like the people that you're closest with are the ones that you're the most open with. And I feel like um, that's what the Lord really desires from us. There's the aspect of thanksgiving and praise when we do need to just rise up or like kind of get to that place, like pick ourselves up and, and do this. But then there's also the times that we do need to just fall at his feet or in his arms and just cry and say, I'm really struggling. Like, I don't understand this. Like you yeah. do say that you are creator, your redeemer, your restorer. And yet this is what's happening and like really being honest with him. Um, and that's what like, he really invites us into that place. I think that's a huge piece of this with practicing the way too. Like, I think we're going to get into that a little bit more in the next sessions, but that honesty is such a key part of spiritual health, of emotional health. And um, to be able to like pour out before the Lord like that is a huge thing that brings breakthrough and he brings the healing in that in those times. Um, but it takes that honesty to get to that place of healing and, and for him to be able to touch us in that way. And that's what was powerful in this of how, um, where was it? verse well I love verse 7 but then going into verse 8 but deep calls to deep at the roar of your waterfalls all your breakers and your waves have gone over me by day the Lord commands his steadfast love and at night his song is with me a prayer to the God of my life it's like he's still steadfast and it's like David's recognizing that like in the midst of his lowest moment he's like you are good like I know this you know <laughs> but it's still that that heart cry to him uh, which is so important for us to have that with the Lord. Is there anything else that stood out to anybody in that? I think, yeah, it's just such a special reminder, too, because it's easy to just be, like, almost, like, militant to yourself sometimes. Like, yeah. be happy, like, praise God, like, be yeah. thankful. But sometimes that's, like, not it, sometimes that's not actually being honest with the mm -hmm. Lord and like there are times when it is important to like and that can shift but then like sometimes you that is like you're saying it's just you have to just be honest and like I love, I love that David has that but often it's not like he's like yeah. be happy like be hopeful mm -hmm. but he like processes and lets the Lord in and then yeah yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. And it can also add in some. Yeah, yep, yeah, for sure. I, I love anytime I see the word yet, it always is like the turning point. Uh -huh. and, um, I remember one morning God gave me Lamentations 3 to read, and I was like, oh, this is dark. Uh -huh. And then it's like, and then in there it's like, yet I choose to remember this. Like, mm -hmm. great is your faithfulness. Like, yep renewed every morning and 
in this, he's like, yet I will still remember you as I ponder the place where your glory streams down from the mighty mountains, lofty mm -hmm. and majestic, the mountains of your awesome presence. Like, yep. he's, he's choosing that, like, heart posture shift in Jesus. Right, yeah, mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, and I was thinking about that, like, kind of the difference of being a complaining person versus being honest with the Lord and, like, you know, complaining to him at times or, like, letting that be. Mm -hmm. I think it, it kind of goes back to that, like, the practices again. And, like, I was thinking about that with, like, practicing Thanksgiving, like, what you shared last week. It's, like, for me, this week has been, like, that reminder of, like, when I'm just driving down the belt line. That's, like, my worst spot to complain. <laughs> when two people are driving, like, 45 miles an hour next to each other. <laughs> but then it's, like, that reminding, like, turning my heart, like, I there's a difference of like complaining about every single thing in your life and like actually like giving thanks for what we do have. But then that intimate time with the Lord that you can just pour out and unload and, and allow, and it is that turning, uh, like allowing him to shift, either bring that healing or shift your heart to like, wait, this isn't so bad. Or like, you know, it's like, wait, God, you are good. And reminding ourselves of that like it is interesting I mean in this psalm too it's like half of it he's talking to himself of like why are you so down <laughs> downcast all my soul uh put your hope in God like he's telling himself like let's get back up um psalm 43 uh is a continuation so he was he's working through things yeah you know and I think that gives us hope that okay King Dave sinned, uh -huh. you were human, and you you got down, and you were persecuted, and yet you, it always cycles through and comes back to um, worship and thankfulness mm -hmm. and confessing who, who God really is and what yep. God is really doing. Yeah. For I know my God will break through for me, and then I'll have plenty of reasons to praise him over and over again. Uh -huh. And then here it's, uh, for I fully expect my Savior God to break through for me, and then I'll have plenty of reasons to praise him all over again. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So some of, some of the historians think that perhaps they were one psalm mm -hmm. at one point. Oh, okay. <laughs> do you mind if I chime in for a second? Yes, please do. I, when I read "Where Is Your God," it's all over the psalm. Yeah, like mm -hmm. all yeah. over. Yeah. Where I, I've been thinking it, and, and I feel like this this could be right or wrong, but that is like a core belief. Like that's not just like a sentence. It's a belief that so many people have. The amount of people that. I know that have deconstructed and are coming back to Jesus, the amount of people in the world that are like, you know, I've never experienced God, but where is he? You know, mm -hmm. Sky Daddy is somewhere. You know, when I read it, I'm like, this is a belief that he never actually bought into. Yeah. Where he's like, Where is your God? I'm gonna remember these things. I'm gonna lean into those. Mm -hmm. It never really feels like he believes it. He's kind of like, all right, cool. Uh, when is this going to happen? <laughs> you know, when am I, when am I going to actually, you know, gird myself up in this? Mm -hmm. you know, maybe not today, but it's not a belief he has. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think what I love is he's real with every word. He doesn't try to hide. Yeah, yeah. just yeah. says authentic, and this is where I'm at. I'm depressed. I'm whatever. Yeah. 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 It's like coming to God with a childlike faith. Yeah. 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 You know, because children may say anything. Your children, you know, your own children, yes. they just might come up and speak anything. And I think for us as adults, sometimes we forget to go to God as a child, mm -hmm. like this, and we can be transparent. Yeah, and we can just give it all to Him yeah. and leave it with Him, and He knows it already. You know, it's not that we don't have to go. With it. You know, I, I was sharing with someone that one hand, I'll take this. And he's saying, no, yeah. I want what you got behind your back. Right, <laughs> yeah. You know, so. <laughs> and a lot of times, that's what we do. I know, that is so true. You know, don't put my hand on 
myself. I'm like, God, I need you to fix this. And yeah. I yeah. remember he was like, no. <laughs> I want that other thing. Yeah. Yeah. That other thing. Nobody knows but me and you. Yeah. 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 And so we got to work on that. So, yeah, keeping that child. <laughs> yes, Lord. <laughs> yes, Daddy. Here I am again. <laughs> yeah. I think that helps. That makes things easier. Yeah, yeah. Um, would somebody read Second Corinthians three seventeen through eighteen? Sorry, can you say that again? Second Corinthians three seventeen to eighteen. Um, so actually, let's start at sixteen. It, or where do we want to start? Let's start at twelve. Second Corinthians three twelve through eighteen. Um, so we were just talking about like beholding the majesty of the Lord, the fear of the Lord, that Revelation 4 where we're um, more like bowed at his feet in awe of him. And then there's the intimacy where we were just talking about with Psalm 42 um, where we just experience his love, the depths of his love, his healing, the where we can just be completely open with him. Um, and I wanted to also just talk about how as we behold him, like as we're worshiping, it's like we start to become like him. And that's when he starts to just transform us from the inside out. It's in that place of worship. So if we could, who would like to read? Okay, awesome. Go ahead. Um, therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. We are not like Moses who put a veil over his face to prevent the Israelites from seeing the end of but their minds were made dull, for to this day the same veil remains when the old covenant is read. It has not been removed because only in Christ is it taken away. Even to this day when Moses is read, a veil covers their hearts. But when anyone, whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Yep. Okay. Uh, now, the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory, are being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is. Thank you for reading that. So yeah, I mean, I feel like it just says it in itself. I don't know if anybody has anything they want to add, but it's just so powerful that like, we have a God that is like that. Like, He wants us to become like Him in that, you know, and to grow in. Um, so as we behold His glory, it's like we are constantly transformed. And there's such a power in that. There's also a power in reading scripture. It's like every time it's like I hear it out loud or speak it out loud, it's like, ah, uh, I don't know if everybody feels that every time. <laughs> yeah. um, the last thing I want to talk through is just the practical, practic practicing God's presence, worshiping in all that we do. Like it's not just music or like this set aside time. It's in all that we do. We talked about that with that scripture from Colossians of like, whatever we do, doing it as unto the Lord. And um, what was the other one? Romans 12. Actually, I'm going to end with that anyways, the, the message version, Romans 12. But it's like all that we are, all that we do is that act of worship. So um, let's take a moment and share what are some ways, like just practically that you worship in your everyday life. Um, I know like we talked about this, the practice of the presence of God by Brother Lawrence, and he yeah. talks all about like just doing dishes, and he's yeah. <laughs> and what it looks like. Like I feel like sometimes it is the actual like m mindfulness of the Lord, but sometimes we're we have. I used to work at a hospital, and it's like I couldn't unless I was like actually like, sitting down could like think about anything else besides like what was before me, you know. <laughs> but it's like it still can be the posture of our hearts, so it doesn't have to be um, like 
specifically saying you are worthy, or, you know, mm -hmm. um, it's the posture. So does anyone have any examples of just how worship has flowed from your everyday life? There was very, uh, there was a very big thing when um, Kevin talked about uh, expressing thankfulness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There you are, and the, the Lord is there, and it's like, oh. mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. I got the key. Yeah. I'm getting in. So it's kind of. I think um, having like done non-secular or like kingdom work and then secular work, mm -hmm. and then like seeing how. Um, I don't know, you're operating in both. Um, I think that when we're like in autopilot mode is when we can um, like continue to be in communion with him and stuff and he can like continue to kind of guide and lead us in mm -hmm. those places of like being in our autopilot or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We can like still be in communion with him. Yeah. It's not that we do it perfectly like all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was. Oh, go ahead. I just had an interesting word for the elder. Yeah. And I love just the hall. And these are the people that would fall through the cracks or they'd go mm. to the nursing home, but we were keeping them out of out of the nursing home and walking by and just saying, you know, hi, but it's acknowledgement. I see you. Mm -hmm. I see you. Your loved. You have value. You have worth. Yep. And it can just be a simple smile. Yes. Yep. I think um, Matthew talked to me like a couple of years ago about like your work being worship and yeah. we, we were talking about photography um, and like you know knowing your camera and like like developing your craft and mm -hmm. like that that can be worship to the Lord it's just like setting your camera or like like Matt shifted and I and I'm like editing photos is really hard for me. I like hate sitting at the computer for so long. Yes. But but trying to reshift that like yeah. how is this worship to the Lord and like how yeah. can I delight in him as I'm yeah. just sitting for hours, you know, doing yeah. that. So, yeah. And I think he, he talked about I think the Garden City book. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah, which I think it was like the Jewish culture to worship just by your craft. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah, that's good. Yeah. I think of that with family life too, because I, mm -hmm. I feel like it's um, actually it was the last, I think it was last week's formation group video, mm -hmm. but it was a lady that was sharing on there of like how she cultivates her time with the Lord. And she's like, what does it look like for me? Because at like 530 in the morning, her little toddler is <laughs> interrupting, you know, <laughs> it's like. I remember that actually right after my confession, I had a counselor that actually told me like, hey, just don't worry about spending time with the Lord. Like, and it actually helped me. Like, I know it mm -hmm. sounds funny, yeah, yeah. but I was, oh, I was so like, okay, I need my time with the Lord in the morning. And, but then my kids, like I get so frustrated because I'm like, they're interrupting. <laughs> but it's like, okay, actually like that's what matters. Like they, for them, one, like to see that, for them to see that, um, my time with the Lord, but then if it's always like they're getting like I'm frustrated with them, then it's like what is that saying to them? Of like right. your time with the Lord is like not very helpful. <laughs> um, but actually seeing them as like raising them as worship and like yeah. you know it's like yeah. that getting to pour into their lives and it is it is that I mean it goes back to the posturing of our hearts. It's like seeing it in a different light like you were saying it's like your craft or like the thing your job um even if it is really hard or it's like it takes a lot of concentration it's like the lord is still with us and it's like our posture is that way and i think that's what's powerful about the practices too because it's like the more that we cultivate that 
like outside of the workplace, the easier it is to integrate in the workplace, like, um, or whatever the area is that may be challenging for you to like be thinking about the Lord or like, you know, um, that it's like, but he's just with us. And, um, so it's like just that acknowledgement, that posturing of our hearts. Does anyone else have anything else with that? I was just thinking that like if I have all this time and nothing really demanded of oh, yeah. and, and I was complaining to my friend and she said, Karen, you can listen to worship. You can pray. Things yeah. That you love to do. You can do that while you're doing this mindless job. Yeah. And I'm thinking, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you for telling me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think of all the things in the preschool with the three year olds. Yes. On a day that I need to send out messages to all our middle school volunteers, and I have a preschool room, and I want to be on my phone sending out these messages, but the choice to, when they're eating snacks, to sit down at the table and just be yeah. present with them. Yeah. Or feeling like that work and wait. Yeah. And to be with them and to show them that I care enough to just sit with them. Yeah. Is meaningful in the work and act of worship. Yeah. I didn't hear Sherry, but it's good to see. I think she wanted to react to what she said. She had an agnostic, <laughs> and she's ready to get uh-huh. preached at by another guy at work, and I just smiled at her and, you know, said something. Um, I don't know, but she goes, well, my mom is praying for me, and I said, well, and so is this other nurse, and I didn't say, and so am I, but kind of like, you're uh-huh. getting ganged up on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I usually just invite the Lord into something. Like, it really yeah. is on purpose to look like, yeah. all right, right, like, I'm going to do this thing. Like, we're going to have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And so I can just take the pressure off. Yeah. Uh, he's very on purpose. All right. Jesus, I'm gonna eat lunch right now. Do you want to eat lunch with me? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is good. Yeah. <laughs> I got over there this weekend. We were eating breakfast and there was a third chair, so I got a third cup for orange juice and put it right there and opened the chair up and I was like, yeah. Jesus is sitting right there. <laughs> we had a blast. That's man. awesome. <laughs> we got smoked. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so I thought this was really powerful too in Hebrews eleven twenty one. Um, if you you don't have to turn there, but. It's by faith Jacob, when dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph, bowing in worship over the head of his staff. And it was like his worship was an act of faith. And I feel like in all these things, if you actually read through um, Hebrews 11, it was like often just like these simple things that they did that were this huge act of faith that's written about. Um, and it's so powerful. But it was like just that actually blessing his son and then worshiping was seen as an act of faith and every time that we worship every time that we um you know like whatever that looks like whether it is taking pictures or spending time with our kids or whatever act of worship it is that there's power when we connect our faith with it that's i mean basically what you're just saying of like inviting god into those moments like and maybe it's at the beginning of the day and then um later it's like oh yeah i forgot i wasn't thinking about that but i see where you were god throughout this um, but Romans 12 in the Amplified, or not the Amplified, the message. So here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Re- readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. Um, that's such a powerful 
wrap up I would say to this section of what worship is and like how it flows out of our everyday life does anyone have any questions comments like any last words before we close yes yes anything before I read it we could just end on that note you read from the message it's the yep the message Romans 12 1 and yeah. 2 Just that I, there is something tied together when we see him as he is, as we read in Revelation, mm -hmm. and then experiencing him in the sitting down to lunch. There's, it's tied together where yeah. we experience his fullness and his glory, heavenly Christ, mm -hmm. and also in the intimacy of our everyday life, mm -hmm. where he doesn't become so familiar that we sustain him or yep. think of him less than he is. But also not so lofty that he's not with us every day. Yep. Yeah. 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 yeah that's teaching good. me to be more intentional mm -hmm. about inviting him into everything instead of yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, well, okay, you can come with me over here, but you can't go with me over there. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> no, but him just being intentional about he's with us. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and like, I think I maybe I felt like sometimes he wasn't. But he always was there. Even like when situations happen, like really bad situations, and I, I would say, well, God, where are you? And he's like, you left me. I think it's here. Uh -huh. <laughs> right where I'm taking me. You know, so come back, you know, to where I am. Yeah. So um, he's teaching me to be more intentional about letting him in. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That's how I felt like with that loner car. I know it sounds so funny, but it's like in the moment, it's easy to like think sometimes the natural things are separate from him or like the things that we mess up on or like, oh, this is such a stupid mistake. Like, of course, we're going to have to pay for it. But it was like, no, God, <laughs> like you work all things together for good. And yes. it's not, it's also those like, like a scratch on a car. Like you work that together for good. And he did, you know, it's like yes. that. I didn't have yeah. to pay for it at all. Same. Like I was honest about it and everything. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's just, he's just so good. And he just yeah. wants our hearts to acknowledging him but all right we'll close with this so here's what I want you to do God helping you take your everyday ordinary life your sleeping eating going to work and walking around life and place it before God as an offering embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking instead fix your attention on God you'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you.